The engines on the Avensis were gasoline, with a volume of 1.6 to 2.4 liters, and the Europeans, in addition, relied on a choice of two diesel engines. The drive was usually front and only very rarely full. There were three bodies, a sedan, a liftback, and a station wagon, but they didn't bring liftbacks to us, and it's almost impossible to find them on sale. Regardless of the body type, the front and rear suspensions are McPherson struts. From not the most positive moments, we note the appearance of direct injection for European cars. Along with the 1AZ FE 2AZ FE engines, 1AZ FSE 2AZ FSE engines appear on the car, and the very ambiguous 1ZZ FE also remains in the line. Suspension The undoubted advantages of the model include the European composure of suspensions, handling, and good interior trim materials. However, there is no unequivocal opinion here either, even among fans of the brand. Moreover, for comparison, you can use completely different machines. Someone compares with the Camry 1540, and someone with the Mercedes W203 or Opel Vector C. The results are predictably different. Well, what about reliability? I'm afraid it's also very ambiguous. However, judge for yourself. Body. Finding a frankly rotten Avensis of this generation is difficult. Most likely, the very rotten Avensis had both accidents and poor recovery in his biography. But, unfortunately, the model also does not belong to the leaders in terms of anti-corrosion protection. The rather thin paintwork often fails on the roof pillars and at the top of the windshield frame. Numerous chips bloom, and the metal in this area is clearly not galvanized, rust spreads quickly. You can even find complaints about leaks at the junction of the windshield and the roof. Sandblasted areas on arches and sills do not bloom so quickly when the paint is lost, but, nevertheless, here, too, pockets of corrosion appear regularly. The arch of the rear wing is especially difficult, the problematic rolling with the absence of a full-fledged locker on the front of the arch affects here. As a result, the arch is gradually rotting from the inside, and it is difficult to stop the process. It's good that there are usually no traces outside, the processes are slow, there is time for correction but a complete repair is associated with the joining of the inner and outer arches. This means that no one will carry out a full-fledged repair until the part is rotten through and through. Cleaning and preservative can delay the problem indefinitely, especially if the job is done on time, but you expected more from Toyota, didn't you? The bottom is generally well protected. Small pockets of corrosion in places of damage and near the attachment points of the rear suspension do not cause concern for the strength of the body. In front, you should carefully monitor the condition of the seam sealant in the engine compartment. Some machines may already have slightly swollen seams near the cups, and this will certainly lead to costly restoration work in the future. The bottoms of the doors are also not ideal. From the inside of the rolling and under the rubber bands, corrosion is usually already noticeable, but also does not yet tend to the outside. You can still look for signs of corrosion in the trunk, especially if the tail lights and the floor are wet, but don't expect serious defects, the problems are purely cosmetic. Unpleasant, but if desired, it can be eliminated. The front and rear optics of Avenis are not very successful. In the headlights of cars before restyling, reflectors quickly burn out, which is why they noticeably blind. There was even a recall campaign, but a few years later the optics go blind and again. In addition, the seam between the body and the headlight itself loses its tightness and leaks in the upper part. You will have to change the headlight assembly or repair it with the installation of new lenses. The optics after restyling in 2006 turned out to be more reliable, but, as practice shows, it also burns out noticeably faster than on most cars. At the back, the lights are so leaky that insects can accumulate in them. The fly in the rear flashlight is just some kind of branded joke for this model. And if you do not take care of sealing the lantern along the upper joint with the body, it will be possible to drain a glass of water from it. The rear window on sedans may not withstand our frosts. More precisely, the glass seam loses its tightness, and if water pours on the rear passengers' heads, then you have to re-glue it. And the glass of the front doors can, when the door is hard closed, leave its place in the guide, and you will have to tinker to put them in place. Weak mirror heating does not cause trouble, but heating the wiper zone does not help much in cold weather, but it easily leads to cracking of the windshield. The doors of the car also contain a number of surprises. For example, door handles suffer not only paint peeling, but also such a funny misfortune as a lock gear breakage in an unfortunate set of circumstances. The tailgate lock was marked by a weak sealing rubber. 
there is an electric lock, and the button is sealed. But over time, the rubber membrane breaks, and moisture penetrates the button. It's good that the contacts here are huge and will not fail immediately. You can either replace the rubber band with a suitable one, or simply change the button assembly to a new one. Door seals after hundreds of thousands of runs are strongly crushed, and the car loses its original tightness. Economical owners have learned to insert a thin tube inside the seal to restore its properties. Or they simply put up with a slightly increased noise, all the same car does not belong to a particularly silent one. Salon. Salon over the years begins to creak. Most often, squeaks and knocks appear in the front panel. Weakening shutters and interior equipment are rented out. Their elimination is not always easy, since the main problems will require at least the removal of the front panel and the center console bulkhead. The creaking seat frame cannot be removed without removing them and checking all the springs and rubber bands. Noise isolation dampens the engine well rubber and road noise is a problem for her. Additional, Shumka is a very common option for Avensis, and useful in every way. But the installation of a second layer of seals on the rear doors gives the greatest effect, it will be quieter and warmer in the cabin in winter. The climate system, unfortunately, is also not without sin. In the cabin, the damper actuators are mainly supplied with gear motors. They have a built-in resistive throttle position sensor, and the grease dries out in it. The positioning of the flap suffers from this, and a mouse squeak and clicks are heard from under the panel. Fortunately, the motors are weak, mechanism breakdowns are rare. Squeaks and failures can be overcome by simply disassembling and lubricating the mechanism again, and at the same time bending the antennae of the current collectors. In the summer, the main problem in the car will be air conditioning. Here, the compressor clutch usually fails, which breaks easily and naturally. Otherwise, there are no particular difficulties. In general, the interior is long playing, strong and able to look good even with intensive use. Age is given out mainly by the sides of the driver's seat and the knob of the gear shift lever. Electrician. Oddly enough, the electrics of the second generation of Vensis are not such a problem-free place. The generator resource is moderate, with runs of more than 100,000, voltage swimming and related difficulties in the operation of electronics are often observed light bulbs burn out and the battery rapidly degrades. Constantly burning out lamps in the rear lights and poor headlights are also a problem, but a minor one. But drivers get much more minor and not very malfunctions of the engine management system, expressed in the appearance of a garland of icons on the front panel. Any failures of the control system, starting with dirty candles, malfunctions of ignition modules and a dirty throttle, and ending with a breakdown of lambdas, of which there are already four pieces on a 2-liter FSE engine, lead to the illumination and inoperability of ESP and ABS. This also leads to contamination of the DMRV. And to understand the causes of failures, a good diagnostician is often required. It combines purely electrical difficulties and problems with the hardware of motors, dirty nozzles, intake manifold flaps, insufficient pressure of the fuel pump in the tank, failure and or recalibration of the steering wheel position sensor and thousands more reasons. The Takata handlebar igniter must be replaced. Do not be too lazy to clarify whether it was completed. In general, Avensis is one of those cars for which it is highly recommended to have at least a simple OBDI scanner, at least in order not to constantly drive with errors and not pay 500 to 800 rubles every couple of months for diagnostics and reset them. Brakes, suspension and steering. The braking system of the car is good, and yet, after hundreds of thousands, the brakes can rattle due to wear on the guides, and the condition of the anthers of the fingers must be monitored very carefully. It's better to just make it a rule to change them every second or third MOT. The ABS unit also fails, and failures are associated either with the operation of the electronics in general, or with the failure of the unit itself. Suspensions are also distinguished by decent reliability. The resource of shock absorber struts by Toyota standards is not very large, only 150,000 mileage, but for other brands this result is very good. The mileage of all suspension elements, except for the struts and stabilizer bushings, is high, often on a run of 200,000, most of the elements are still original. In addition, almost all elements are changed separately, there are ball bearings and thrust bearings. Only the mileage of wheel bearings fails, after hundreds of thousands of mileage they can start to make noise and will make noise louder and louder. The rear multi-link McPherson strut has a bad character. Strange by European standards, 
the design with the rack guide is sensitive to the slightest backlash and gives the machine excessive agility when war. The calm handling of the car changes a lot, sometimes becoming dangerous. This car needs to be cambered every year or even more often, and always with rear suspension control. In addition, in repair, the rear suspension often pleases with tightly soured joints, requiring the use of a blowtorch and a grinder. The steering of the Toyota Avensis T250 also turned out to be not without sin. With the most common 1.8-liter engine, there is a Euro, which is characterized by a tendency to knox and gear backlash. It's interesting, but a lot of collective farm repairs fall on this particular note. Here in drilling holes for lubrication, and rearranging the gears with the other, less worn side, and squeezing the rail when knocks appear. On cars with 2.0 and 2.4-liter engines and all diesel engines, there is a regular power steering, but there is also enough trouble with it. On cars before restyling in 2006, rack leaks are a common thing, and surprisingly, cars with original racks in this trouble are still found. On cars after restyling, the rails are noticeably more reliable and flow less often. But the power steering pump, which does not like overly active taxiing and dirty liquid, is on all years of production. Change the fluid more often and do not use Dexrin, the machine prefers low viscosity Pentison oils and their derivatives. Transmission. Almost all cars are front wheel drive. All wheel drive, too, cannot be afraid, everything is there, like a Rafik, but they are extremely rare. In addition, these are exclusively sedans with not too powerful engines. At the same time, Avensis is one of the few cars that have more problems with manual transmissions than with automatic transmissions. Avensis has one interesting feature. In all cars with stock motors, drives rarely break. Sometimes CV joints fail, occasionally cuts off the splines of the drives. But for the stick of the drive itself to break in half, this only happens with Toyota. The reason lies in the corrosion of the part under the overlay load. Corrosion sharpens an already lightweight shaft, and when driving through irregularities with traction or slipping, this shaft breaks. Fortunately, contract parts from Toyota wish in the back of ZNE10G will help out. The Fielder 123 will work too, it's inexpensive, and the part is usually in excellent condition. Buying the original is only new, all used ones are affected by corrosion to one degree or another. These same parts will come in handy in case of failure of the original CB joints, which are also quite flimsy here. As I said, there are enough problems with the manual transmission. Basically, the bearing of the secondary shaft fails under the number 90,903 to 63,010, more precisely, its ancestor 90,080 to 36,139. But there are also difficulties with oil leaks through the shaft seals. Unfortunately, if you don't go to the service at the first suspicious noises, there will be nothing to repair. The remnants of the dead bearing will float around the box, disabling the rest of the bearings, gears and, finally, the differential. You can guess from which cars the boxes fit if you read the paragraph about drives and CB joints. The original ones with the Vensus are again quite scarce. In principle, the cost of repairs in any case will not be too high. That contract boxes, that small repairs are inexpensive, in the range of 15 to 40,000 rubles with work. But already somehow there are too many problems for a reliable brand, isn't it? If you do not want difficulties, then you can take a car with automatic transmission. With a little bit of care, there will be no problems especially since the oil is changed here quite often according to the regulations, the boxes have a good cooling system and conservative settings. With 1.8-liter engines, the U341E mainly works, and the stronger U140-U241E is put on the 2-liter ones. But the 2.4-liter engines rely on a 5-speed automatic transmission of the U151E series. All automatic transmissions are considered almost eternal. In any case, they are more reliable than motors and with normal maintenance, will go far beyond 300,000 kilometers. They have little wear on the gas turbine engine blocking pads, they have good and strong mechanics. But, unfortunately, everything can be broken. 4-speed U140 slash U241, the boxes are strong, they can withstand engines up to 3 liters of working volume. 2 liter for them is not a problem at all. But the front planetary gear set, due to the peculiarities of the lubrication system, always fails before the rest of the elements, especially if the driver did not spare the gearbox and engine. From purely resource problems, one can encounter wear on the rear cover, which also depends on loads and driving style. 
but also does not forgive contaminated oil. After the rear cover is worn out, a pressure leak finishes off the direct clutch package and the seat of its drum. And, of course, for boxes operated with dirty oil, the oil pump bushing or the oil pump itself usually fails. Much more often, the first bell manifests itself in the form of malfunctions in the valve body. His problems are directly related to the wear of the gearbox mechanics and oil contamination. Usually the main problem is contamination and erosion of the channels of the solenoids. To repair them, there are restoration kits from Sonax, but most often used valve bodies are simply selected. There are still enough parts, and repairs require a high production culture, as a result of which not all workshops can do it. U341E boxes are the same U140 in miniature. They have exactly the same difficulties with overloading the front planetary gear and with the back cover. But the valve body is somewhat more reliable and causes less trouble. Their resource is definitely no less than that of their older brother, so you can safely take it. Just check the cleanliness of the oil and listen at low speeds for trolleybus sound in first or second gears. The gas turbine engine blocking pads wear out quite quickly here, especially with an aggressive driving style. Already after 150,000 run, it is necessary to carefully monitor the contamination of the oil in order to prevent their operation to the adhesive layer. The forward clutch package is heavily overloaded and very sensitive to pressure loss. And they happen for the same reasons as the four-speed counterparts, mainly due to wear on the rear cover and drum seals of the forward package. Much more often you can meet the destruction of the needle bearing of the cover, but planetary gears are loaded more evenly and problems with them happen less often. The valve body also turned out to be more sensitive to contamination and more expensive to restore than four-stage boxes. The box requires more careful maintenance, but can better withstand the increased loads from the racers. It is much more expensive to repair, but the maximum resource of the mechanism is still high, it's just that the conditions for achieving it are noticeably tougher. Change the oil more often, preferably every 30,000 kilometers, and keep it clean. A large external radiator and an external filter of the box would also be useful here, as on other 5-speed Eisen boxes. Motors. Toyota engines are considered one of the most reliable. True, a lot of tails are associated with the engines of the 1ZZ series, as well as with direct injection D4. And not all of these stories are lies. To the credit of the company, it must be said that in any case, the layout solutions and workmanship are very high, and other brands have a lot to learn but there is no legendary reliability here at all. Moreover, catalysts, exhaust, supports, cooling systems and even wiring are already entering the time of withering, complicating and shortening the life of motors. It is much more expensive to repair, but the maximum resource of the mechanism is still high, it's just that the conditions for achieving it are noticeably tougher. Change the oil more often, preferably every 30,000 kilometers, and keep it clean. A large external radiator and an external filter of the box would also be useful here, as on other 5-speed Eisen boxes. Toyota engines are considered one of the most reliable. True, a lot of tails are associated with the engines of the 1ZZ series, as well as with direct injection D4. And not all of these stories are lies. To the credit of the company, it must be said that in any case, the layout solutions and workmanship are very high, and other brands have a lot to learn but there is no legendary reliability here at all. Moreover, catalysts, exhaust, supports, cooling systems and even wiring are already entering the time of withering, complicating and shortening the life of motors. The most common Avensis engine is the 1.8-liter 1ZZ FE series engine. A lot of swear words have been said about it. It is now obvious that the real problems of the motor are an unsuccessful piston group until 2005, a small timing chain resource a lack of repair dimensions and a lack of full-fledged valve seats in the cylinder head. The lightweight cylinder block also turned out to be very sensitive to overheating, which even caused serious condemnation of open-deck designs in general among Toyota drivers. The situation is noticeably improved by a reliable control system, inexpensive spare parts and its prevalence. In addition, there are cast-iron sleeves that are damaged only during prolonged work with fixed rings. In extreme cases, the sleeve is cut out and the motor is sleeved again. True, the fragile design of the block makes this operation rather complicated. Having bought a dead unit, you will find out that there are no repair sizes, and if there are cracks on the valves and their seats are killed, then you will be offered to immediately change the cylinder head. There are no classic cast iron seats. 
Valve seals sit loosely, and the increased temperature of the cylinder head reduces their service life to four to five years. But the chain is relatively inexpensive and easy to replace, only a little more expensive than replacing the belt. The main complaint about the motor is a tendency to oil appetite. And in general, he is not as reliable as expected from him. This is sarcasm. But, as they say, these are your expectations and your problems. For many owners, these motors have traveled 250 to 350,000 kilometers without major repairs, which means that the potential of the motor is not bad. With a new or modified piston group, some owners simply drill holes to drain the oil from the oil scraper ring or change it to a wider set. After careful assembly and with the catalyst replaced in time, the engine can go another couple of hundred thousand kilometers. But for this, you will have to service it in time and prevent overheating of the oil in the crankcase by installing protections and prolonged idling with the air conditioner on. In extreme cases, you can buy a contract unit very cheaply. Pretty much the price of metal. On the Avensis T250, you can find instances of a motor with pistons of the problematic series 13101220031 with a moderate oil appetite, which, at the slightest overheating or an unsuccessful choice of oil, strives to develop into a serious one. It is highly recommended to upgrade to 13101220032 or, if possible, even 13101-22140-13101-22142-13101-22180. Cars up to the 2006 model year are at risk. But it's also not worth counting on the complete absence of problems with more recent engines. The problem was complex, and the manufacturer tried to solve it until the end of the production of this series of engines in 2013. The small-sized versions of this 1.6-liter 3ZZ FE series engine inherit mostly positive qualities of the 1.8-liter engine. The oil appetite is much less pronounced and manifests itself mainly after runs over 250,000, the cylinder head works more reliably, and even the chain runs longer. But there are cars with this engine extremely rarely and in very simple configurations. European cars relied on a motor not only with conventional distributed injection, but also with direct injection 1AZ FSE. Its fuel equipment is distinguished by a noticeably higher price, increased complexity in diagnostics, and frankly poor starting qualities in winter. In addition, these engines, when operated in short trips and in winter, noticeably increase the output of the cylinder in the upper part due to the ingress of a large amount of gasoline. The early series of engines, up to the restyling of 2006, are very prone to pulling the threads of the cylinder head bolts from the block and therefore the craftsmen are extremely reluctant to repair them. And if the antifreeze has already flowed, and the engine has overheated, then the block will most likely have to be replaced. In principle, the engines of this series do not have unsolvable problems, especially if the injection is conventional distributed, and if desired, even the cylinder block can be repaired, but you need to be aware of these features when buying. In addition, engines have two catalysts and four lambdas, they are prone to increased carbon formation in the intake manifold. And FSE versions suffer from very serious soot on the valves. The repair dimensions of the piston group are also missing. In short, 1AZ engines after 2006 are indeed quite Toyota in terms of reliability, but only with conventional injection. Otherwise, you need to be prepared for surprises. Motors of the 2AZ FE and 2AZ FSE series repeat 1AZ but there are no problems with the thread of the cylinder block, but balance shafts are added. The piston group resource is on average a little higher, and in general this is the most reliable engine of the FE version on the Avensis, but it is also the rarest. Diesel engines are rare, but there are a lot of problems with them. This is clearly not Toyota's forte. Leave them to European users. I think it is now clear why the Avensis is not as popular as the Camry. The brand pulls the price up, but there is no real reliability and legendary indestructibility here. And the difference in price with the larger Camry for new cars was practically absent. But a larger car was equipped with much more interesting power units and was generally more reliable. Against the background of European budget classmates, the quality of Avensis is quite acceptable, and its design is quite European. But in terms of handling and ergonomics, the Japanese still lag behind the Europeans despite the fact that the cars were developed in the English design studio of the company. Lacks Avensis and charisma, his utility can be seen from everywhere. But he is quite tenacious, and the Japanese relatives are ready to help with details on occasion. So you can buy. Just be careful.